Chris Wielbeck in the URM I from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring the little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And this is a review of the uh, reconstruction of Evil of the Daleks. I've been meaning to get this about a week or so. And it's brilliant, okay? It's really good. This is a strong, strong, strong recommend uh, uh, for more reasons than, than I would have thought. And it's interesting because I, I, I know this story. Listen, I uh, I got the, uh, what was it, the audio book of it, the book, of, not the audio book, the book on the uh, uh, the TV recording of it. They, when they released it in the 90s, John Nathan Turner scripted narration to link it. And I think uh, Tom Baker read it. So I know the story, right? I know the story. Oh, boy. Did I not know the story until now? I'm so glad they. they I'm so glad they've they've reconstructed it. I'm so glad they waited because there's a lot to recommend about the uh, yeah recommend about this release. Uh, before we get into it, can you hit the like button? Because uh, I very much like this. <laughs> okay, I very much like this. I don't think I can say this any stronger. I very much like this. Hit the like button. Hit the share button. Hit the subscribe button. That's the one I really like you hitting. Hit the uh, uh not hit uh, comment. Let me know what you think. And I got. A gazillion comments I need to reply to very, very shortly. That's one of my big jobs today. I had to get to Google. If you, look, if you take the time to comment, I will take the time to reply to you. Uh, but mostly subscribe. I'm getting close to 3,200 subscribers. That'll be fantastic. Thank you very much. I am ridiculously grateful. Uh, 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 so like, share, subscribe, comment, all those things are good. I'm also ridiculously grateful for this release of uh, 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 Evil of the Daleks. It's fantastic. Let's talk about the animation first, which uh, uh, has uh, been variable, let's say. Uh, I think they're in a pretty good little uh, uh, um, um, path right now with this group. They seem to have two teams working. You've got the Big Finish team uh, headed by Gary, Ru Gary Russell, I think. Is he still in Australia? I don't know. So they did Fury of the Deep, and they're doing uh, Galaxy 4. Not not very well, in my opinion, right? It, 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 I, maybe after a few more releases, they'll they'll get uh, get into the stride. And then we've got this other group who have done... I think they started with uh, Power of the Daleks and then the Macro Terror. Uh, and what's the other? I've got more on my shelf. I should, should be able to see from here. There was another one as well. I can't remember. Uh, oh, Faces Ones, right? And they've been growing uh, uh, in uh, in quality uh, uh, ever since they, since they started. And they, this is fantastic. The, the quality of animation is, is, I wouldn't call it broadcastable, right? <laughs> let's, not get, let's not get crazy. I wouldn't call it, like, broadcastable. Um, but uh, it, this is the first one, I would say, that matches, and in many ways exceeds the initial one they did with the invasion uh, that was done by Cosgrove Hall, which I thought was fantastic. Um, yeah, and they, did, they, they just refined their techniques and refined it and refined it and refined it. And they're, they're, they're just, it's just really good. And, for, and so I felt much more like I was experiencing this episode. I didn't have to, like, have a leap of the imagination. I always watch it in black and white. I actually, I'm actually going to check out the color version, too, because just because the, the, uh, 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 the animation is so good, right? It really is genuinely, genuinely very, very good. Um, so there's that. And then there's uh, uh, the, making of, the making of the extras are a bit dull. I hate to say this. They used to be a m much better in the in the... DVD range and they're fantastic in the Blu-ray range, uh, uh, but they, it, it's, it, this one's a bit dull. It's the, the making of is very very plodding. Um, he doesn't really do much for me, right? It, it, it was it was I found it boring, which amazed me. I I, I genuinely found it boring. There used to be a lot more quirkiness and fun on the uh, on the DVD extras, and again on the Blu-ray extras, uh, the box sets. Uh, they're 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 fantastic. I mean they're they're but this, this one's like. Eh, <laughs> kind of told me what was going on. I I would have really liked more to see a documentary about, say, Fraser Hines talking about the making of it, um, and going behind it, and also looking at the reconstruction of it. I, I would like to see his reaction to his animated Jamie, right? Wouldn't that, and things like that. Just things are a little bit out of the box thinking, which uh, not not around so much nowadays. <laughs> okay, unfortunately, but uh, but other than that. Uh, it's not. It's not a reason not to buy. Not to buy this. Uh, but the main reason is a story. Story is breathtakingly contemporary. When I say contemporary, not the current era of Doctor Who. If you like the current era of Doctor Who, that's great. I can't stand it. I hate it. Uh, uh, I actually think it's the absolute opposite of Doctor Who. But there you go. That's just me for you. Uh, uh, but this is like a Russell T Davis story, right? It starts off. You got the first two episodes. Uh, episode and a half. Let's say, well, should be the first episode on a 45 minute episode. Uh, it's set very contemporary. It's set in like Swing Sixes London. It, it carries on uh, directly from the Faceless Ones where the TARDIS is stolen. 
and it's like a contemporary crime thriller as the Doctor and Jamie investigates who stole the TARDIS. And it's like, the whole feeling of this story is a bit different. It's a bit it's like looking at things in a new way, which, you know, I... Um, the Daleks were still new enough. This is their sixth release, I think. Their sixth story. Let me think. We had the Daleks. Uh, well, uh, what do you want to call them? Dead Planet. Whatever you want to call that story. The Daleks. Uh, Dalek Invasion of Earth. Dalek Master Plan. Oh, I'd love to see that. Um, then we got... Then there's nothing till Power of the Daleks. Uh, and... Wait, is there, was there another one? Am I missing one out? There's Power of the Daleks and Evil of the Daleks. And the chase. Oh, man, I missed out the chase. So oh, fine. So we got one. Let's go do that again. Uh, uh, Daleks, Dalek Invasion Earth, chase, um, Dalek Master Plan, Power of the Daleks, and Evil of the... Okay, so this is the sixth release. And you can see that they're looking into something new to the Daleks. They they introduce the Daleks, right? they like, oh, and uh, who knew it was going to it was gonna take off? So then the next thing is, oh, now we've got to bring them to Earth. That, that's a much more... And we got like a... This is only 20 years after the, after uh, World War II, you know. it's uh, So people were used to the idea of occupation. Again, I think 20 years. Imagine uh, we're talking about uh, like when, when Rose came out. So it, it's still very much in the cultural side, yes. I understood so, uh, 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 the whole idea of uh, war and occupation, occupy, and that, yeah, the Daleks were clearly the naughty national socialists, right? So then, so then, you know, they, they kind of realized they had to go into a big space adventure. They said, well, why don't we give the Daleks the same thing that the Doctor has? Let them, and they have a chase through time and space. The chase, okay? And then they just went for a huge, ah, now let's have the Daleks destroy the universe, right? Uh, with the D Dalek master plan. And I, that's basically all they could. So then when they, when they wanted to bring Daleks back in with, uh, uh uh, Patrick Troughton, they realized they had to go look to do something new and original, which they kind of gave up on for a while. Uh, they had to look at it from a new way. So, you know, da, da, uh, um, the uh, was it the pat power of the Daleks is what if the Daleks are outnumbered and they have to uh, think their way out of it? And now we get to this one, which is like, ah, oh, just bonkers. We'll just do bonkers stuff with them. Because, uh, like, for the beginning of it, the Daleks don't don't appear. They don't appear until the, the end of the first episode. And I kind of wish they didn't call that first episode Evil of the Daleks. You know, I kind of like when John Nathan Turner uh, changed... Um, what's his name? Uh, 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 um... Anthony Ainley's name as an anagram, so you wouldn't know it's so the master so much. Uh, uh, yeah, those, those sort of things. I like it. Uh, that would have been even because they, the Dalek shows up at the end in the middle of this weird time travel story, time travel crime story, uh, set in contemporary swinging six in London with a weird Victorian guy in it and something weird's going on. Um, so then by the second episode, they were transported to the major, major setting for this, which, uh, again, very Russell T. Davis, Doctor Who, because now we've gone from the contemporary into the uh, uh, historical, and we get this wonderful historical adventure, but we have the Daleks and the Doctor acting towards each other as their equals. You know, they like the, the Doctor is forced to do... And I'm not going to spoil it. It's really, well, 50 years old. <laughs> but I'm not so 55 years old. Not spoiling it, but uh, the do Doctor is forced to serve. And they they work together. And the working together is, is, is interesting. Like, there's a scene in it where, uh, where the one do Daleks turn around and say, And Doctor... Be careful. I just love that. You know, I, I'm one of the sort of person that likes it when, uh, well, the Daleks in Manhattan, when the two Daleks talk to each other and the, uh, they looked around behind them before. I love that stuff, okay? I really love that. So uh, it made the Daleks real. It made the Doctor real. Yeah? There's a scene once in a, a David Tennant episode, I think uh, Partners in Crime, Right where he's investigating somebody and there's nobody in the TARDIS. And you go, oh look at this! It's a, uh, it's a. Uh, it, yeah, it says whatever it is, and then you pull back and you see he's alone. Right, you see how you know, and that just made the character real to me. Like added that little layer. Of, so you get you get that. And again, very Russell T Davis story. It's really incredible. Um, and then you know we get a big season finale at the end with uh, a giant showdown uh, between the uh, uh, the Doctor and the Daleks, and the Doctor is. A very different type of warrior. <laughs> this, that we, uh, yeah, I, we, we, we saw it more in, uh, um, was it, uh, Web of Fear, how the Doctor, uh, the Patrick Townsend Doctor, likes to outsmart the, the bad guys, right? And, and very Seventh Doctor ish. Uh, 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 which, yeah, I, I've got a whole new appreciation for the second Doctor now because of the, these uh, reconstructs. So, yeah, it was, the end, it was the end of the season. They had a season end, which is supposed to be the final end for the Daleks. 
Uh, and it was for a long time. You know, the Terra Nation was going off to film the uh, or try and get the uh, the Destroyers film, the the Dalek TV show. They wanted Mel Blanc to do the voices. Ooh, that sounds awful. Um, but uh, 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 yeah, listen again. I, huge recommend for me. Huge recommend. A real revelation. That this is such a again such a Russell T Davis story. Uh, great animation and, and, and yeah, look, the making of not bad. <laughs> okay, not bad. That's best I can really tell you. Uh, so next next animation coming out is Galaxy Four. Not interested in it. I'm getting it. Obviously, not not really that interested. Don't like the team doing it. It's a Fury team. I hope they got better. But the team that did Free, Free, uh, Free from D also did the missing episode of. Um, web of fear and they tried a new process with it which just didn't work at all at all so uh, uh so the next animation as well in december we got the season 17 box set blu-ray box set coming out which i can't wait for and it was actually a prediction i made before it came out and i was right about so i'm very happy about that but the next one coming out the next one coming out after this is apparently uh, uh, the Abominable Snowman. So that's exciting. So how do I know this? Uh, firstly, the same person predicted uh, uh, Web of Fear, not Web of Fear, uh, Evil of the Daleks and uh, 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 Fury from the Deep also predicted uh, uh, um, the Abominable Snowman. But mostly, Fraser Hines said it was in, uh, was it, uh, Snowdonia uh, filming a documentary for uh, 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 the Abominable Snowman. Bit of a big, uh, bit, bit of a giveaway, right? Bit of a giveaway. Uh, man, they schlep around. Have they never heard of green screens? But yeah, I think that's going to be done by the same team that did this, and I am so psyched, right? I'm so psyched for that. Uh, uh, they're doing great work, right? I, I just wish there was more of them. They could do more so we wouldn't have to have the, the other B team, which doesn't do as good, let's be honest. And like, yeah, I, it's so weird. I watched, uh, was it The Ice Warriors the other day, and man, the, that, that animation look inferior compared to this. It's just breathtaking. There you go. Uh, uh, so yeah, bit of a recommend. <laughs> My name's Sula Beck and you rabbi from another planet. Please like, share and subscribe and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop.